Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another episode of the English Premier League predictions with me, Kosi. And we are going to be looking at March day five. Who will win? Why will they win? And who will lose? And why they will lose? I have a couple of games, 10 games lined up for March day five. So, guys, let's go through them. Arsenal up against Manchester City. I think that's the biggest. Um, Liverpool up against Everton. That is also a big game. But I think if you look at you know the balance on paper and power, I think uh, Arsenal Manchester City could be voted out as as our biggest game of the weekend. Then the Merseyside derby comes in second. I would have chosen Liverpool and Everton to be uh, you know the first game because you think Everton are really in form. They have won four out of four this season. Liverpool have only lost one of uh, as well, but they lost a humiliating defeat. And by the way, let us start with the, you know let, let, let us start with Everton Liverpool. Um, Liverpool suffered that stupid 7-2 loss at the hands of Aston Villa at the Villa Park. Who was to blame? Was it the defence? Was it Adrian? Because after conceding 7, many fans went to social media, you know, went to blogs and YouTube and, so, and started blaming Adrian. That is a bad goalkeeper. But sincerely, if I look at those goals and how they were conceded, there are not so many that I'm, I'm going to blame Adrian for, okay? The first goal, he makes a stupid mistake. A goalkeeper at Liverpool shouldn't do that, right? But the second goal, where were the defenders? The third goal, the deflections. How the hell do you defend like that? Now, Liverpool are visiting Everton, one of the informed you know, clubs in the league. I mean, they have won four out of four. They have... A striker on fire in Calvin Calvert Lewin. So, who wins this game? It's the early kickoff tomorrow Saturday. I think, you know, Master Side Derby is gonna change. We are gonna see a, a, a different face of the Master Side Derby. You know, it has been a one, you know, a one-man win game. Liverpool beating Everton whenever they find them, whenever they find them, because they have been better. The, 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 if you look at the comparison between the, you know, the clubs, the teams, Everton and Liverpool in the, you know, in the recent years, Liverpool has been better. They have been you know, winning this derby with 5-0, 3-1, 2-1, 1-0, 6-1, whatever they want. But I think this season is going to be more interesting because Carlo Ancelotti has added another twist to Everton. Just look at how they play this season. They have a Hamis Rodriguez, I mean, if you consider seven against Jack Grealish side, what about Hamis? Are you going to concede nine? I'm kidding. But it's a very difficult trip, very difficult trip, but it's an essential game for Liverpool. You never, you know, you never imagine you have an essential game and your worst enemies have to lay low so that you win against them. It's not going to, you know, just happen, is it? It's like saying that we as now have this Tottenham game, but we want to win it to avoid relegation. Those bastards could act, you know, could just relegate us and you know just I don't know. But anyway, um in this one I think Liverpool will win this game. Uh, although Everton are unbeaten, uh, but I think Liverpool need this game beg you know better than they cannot even think about it. So um, I think Liverpool win, will, will win a 2-1. However, it's not going to be an easy game for Liverpool. It's not going to be an easy game for Liverpool at all. And I won't be shocked if it is a 1-0 draw or Everton edge it a 2-1. But I'm going for a Liverpool win 2-1. On target, Sergio Mane. I think Mane will score with, uh, with Roberto Firmino. Those are the two scorers. Uh, scoring for Everton, I think James Hamis Rodriguez might score. Uh, just to prove a point, he might score in that game. Okay, then the biggest game of the weekend, Manchester City up against Arsenal. I've already dropped the predicted lineups on, on, on my channel, the Arsenal Podcast. So um, if you're watching this video from Cosy Talks Football, make sure you check the Arsenal Podcast and see the predicted lineups in this game. Um, Mikel Arteta up against his you know, former manager, the teacher, 
the trainer versus trainer versus the key. It's not going to be an easy game. Arsenal are traveling away from home, and of course, uh, this is a stadium where we have not won a game ever since I think 2012. That is how bad we are when we are on the road at a head stadium. So it's not going to be an easy game. However, both squads look balanced. They don't look balanced because Arsenal has brought in many top, uh, no, top quality players, but they look balanced because Manchester City is in a situation where they can't help but lose to any club that, you know, is better than them. So, if uh, this is the only chance Arsenal can use to beat Manchester City, the truth. And there are so many people saying that, you know, if Pep Guardiola loses this game, his season is going to be over and so on. I don't think like that. I think City will bounce back, but right now, they are in a recession, like, you understand? A, you know, a depression, right? Something like that. So, prediction, I think, as long to win this game tomorrow by two goals to nil. If Mikel Ateta gets his tactics, the lineup right, they can win, or we can win, because I'm a national fan anyway. Two goals to nil. I'm not giving Manchester City a chance at the Etihad tomorrow. I'm not saying we are, you know, better than them. They are going to possess more. They'll have that, you know, they have the, they'll have the biggest share of the ball in the 90 minutes. But if we can capitalize on the chances, we capitalize on the weaknesses they have. We are going to beat them. So now, that is humble enough. I mean, we have beaten them before in the FA Cup. They don't look any better than the team, we, you know, we beat in the FA Cup last season. They even look worse. That defense, that midfield, no Aguero, no Jesus, no, you know, no, 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 no Jesus. I think this must be an opportunity for us to beat City. Tunil, Arsenal, Aubameyang, and Lacazette. Moving on, um, I'm not going to talk about Thomas Partey, don't worry. Um, still tomorrow, we have Chelsea, Southampton, Saturday. Chelsea, Southampton. Frank Lampard is on pressure. He needs to win as many games and collect many points as he can because the big man, Roman Akandayevic Abramovich, doesn't tolerate nonsense. Um, if I look at Southampton, how they have been doing this season, not so bad. But Chelsea at the Stamford Bridge, I expect them to win this game at all costs. They have only lost one game against Liverpool, which I would say... It was just five or losing against the champions, and they did lose ugly. I mean, they did lose five, something like five or six nil or something like that, or seven two. I think, you know, it was decent two nil, and Kepa actually, you know, the mistakes of Kepa resurfaced again. They have a problem that you know you might find that all their goalkeepers, including many, is injured. Um, I don't know whether he's gonna be fit, but if he's fit, then good to go. I have a problem with Chelsea. They have defensive issues. They did solve them in the, um, in the summer. They brought in so many midfielders. They failed to bring in a, you know, a, a decent center back. They bought Malangsa. They, you know, they loaned him out in port, to Porto. Um, I asked myself, what was that supposed to mean? But they don't have a bad run. They, you know, they are, in their last game, they almost killed Crystal Palace. So, yeah. Chelsea to win against Southampton. 3-1, Timo Vanna will score, Kayavas will score, that is my prediction. And um, who else should score? Vanna, I'm going to give Vanna two goals and Kayavas, no, I give Vanna two goals and Christian Pusik one goal. Um, Havas will score in the next game, I think. Okay, um, still moving on, Manchester United were thumped six goals at the Old Trafford, and now they are away in the late kickoff out on Saturday to the St. James Park, Newcastle. Newcastle have not been doing so badly this season. They are opening games, they have a win, they have a draw, they look decent. Manchester United are in a state where they are, you know, I don't know whether, where, you know, whether they are desperate or they have lost the way, but it better be that they have not lost the way, because that would be even worse. Their dressing room is 
in shambles. Every day there is an episode of a fight that links. I think they have, you know, they have recruited some Mayweather in there and you know and Mane Pacquiao somehow. So, and you know, guys, football starts in the you know starts with the dressing room, and this is why Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is under a lot of pressure. Not because he has lost two games this season, but because his dressing room is far, far torn apart. I mean, a player like Paul Pogba, when he comes out and says that, you know, you know guys, for me, I want to play for Real Madrid. When you are, you know, you are at a top class club like Manchester United, you're getting big wages, you're one of the biggest players at the club. What is that supposed to mean? What the hell is that supposed to mean? I mean, just tell me, just talk to me. Just talk to me that a player like Aubameyang has a contract you know, with Arsenal and says, I want to play for Barcelona. What the hell is that supposed to mean? So I think Manchester United must be having one of the, you know, horrible seasons, season starts. Not because they are losing, but because they are losing their dressing room. That is the most fundamental part of football. What we see on the pitch reflects what's, you know, what is on the, in, in, in the dressing room. And you guys, you know, if you still remember Arsenal last season, we were almost getting relegated because of that punk, Unai Emery. He had torn the dressing room around, you know, apart. He had, he had players he wanted, he had players, he had, you know, he had outcasts in the dressing room. That is, you know, that is, you know, that, that's not right. It doesn't sound right. But still, I go for Manchester United win. Van der Beek should start. Van der Beek should start. Um, he will make an assist in that game. Uh, they don't have Anthony Martial. Three games out, he was, um, he, he, he got a, a straight red card uh, against um, Tottenham. That was childish. Both of them, from Lamela and Marsh, you know Marshall, they shouldn't have done that. It was uncalled for. And of course, I don't forget Harry Maguire's poor, poor defensive tactics. They smell. They smell. How the hell do you defend like that with 80 million price tag on your back? And you, you know, you pull down your own defender in, you know, in your own 18 years box because you're desperate. Those stupid headers he was heading away with, you know, with show. I think, you know, that is time for that to stop. If Manchester United is going to get anything out of this season, right? I don't care, you know, whether he has problems or, or, or not, but United needs him on the pitch, he's captain, and he's the most, most reliable player in that defense. So, United, 1-0. Van der Beek to make the assist, Rashford to score the goal. 1-0, that's my prediction. Moving on, Sheffield, you know, versus Fulham. Oh my God. Now, Fulham, if they think they are going to get a win, it's not going to be against Sheffield. Trust me, they have been so awful this season and they are going to continue to be even this weekend. Sheffield United, I don't think they are in a position to lose to Fulham, especially when they are at home. No. I think Sheffield, this is a 3-0, 3-1 win for Sheffield. 3-0, 3-1. No, no, no doubts about that. Mm. Crystal Palace, Brighton, Neil Mope. You know, when I think about Brighton, I think about Neil Mope. But Crystal Palace, of course, you think about Wilfred Zaha. They have that Ghanaian striker that really impresses me so much. I know Jordan Ayew is talented. I just love his talent. He has calls his calls and I'm like, did he do that? Did he just do that? So, um, Crystal Palace, Brighton, I think this is a draw. Ma, you know, Crystal Palace lost ugly to Chelsea. They contained it in the first half. The second half, it was ugly. Absolutely ugly. But still, I'll give them the chance to get a point against Brighton. Brighton is a pressing team. They will score. Crystal Palace, of course, at home, I expect them to score as well. It's, I'll go for a 1 0 draw. 1 1. 1 1. Brighton Crystal Palace. Tottenham Motspa, my noisy neighbors, Jose Moreno, and Gareth Bell is back with Vasim West Ham. I, I, I still remember when we played West Ham, they didn't look that bad. They possessed us all night long. 
but we still beat them. Tottenham are on fire. I mean, if you say that they're on fire and Manchester United, you know, hear this, they'll be like, yeah, they are. <laughs> I know. So, I expect Tottenham to beat West Ham by three goals to nil. The goal scorer is there. Son will come onto the score sheet. Ken again. And I think this time Gareth Bale might do some magic if he gets the chance to play. Um, 3 0. It must be a decent win for Tottenham Hotspur. I don't want them to win, that's the truth, but they have to win. They are they're on fire. Probably one of them, you know, the team's on fire. Um, Leicester City Aston Villa. Leicester City Aston Villa. Let me just take a seat. This is going to be a hard one. Villa, after smashing Liverpool seven goals to two, they have the confidence. They feel they can do it. And of course, Aston Villa don't have so many players that play on, you know, are on international duty. That means their players have been resting. I think some are players with Leicester City. Because how many players at Leicester City go for international break? There are very few. So it's going to be quite an interesting game. It's for Sunday. Um, I think Leicester City can win this game against Aston Villa, but they got to be careful. It's not going to be an easy game. Like, it might be a 2-1, a 3-2. I'm going to go for a 3-2 win. Uh, Aston Villa, it must be raining goals. But I'm not, I'm not going to be shocked when Aston Villa lose after beating Liverpool. 3-2, though, that is the score I'm going with. Leeds Wolves is a Monday game as well as West Ham, West Brom, Burnley. I think Burnley have more experience in, um, uh, than West Brom. They even look better than West Brom. West Brom, they have this, you know, kind of joking around thing. But I'll go for a one all draw. 1-1. One, one. No, I'll go for a nil. Nil all draw. 0-0. Zero, zero. Burnley, West Ham. 0-0. Zero, 0-0. Zero. Zero, zero. Leeds Wolves, that is a Monday epic show. It must have some incredible scenes. Leeds Wolves, Wolverhampton Wanderers, they looked so magnificent, beautiful last season. Nuno Espirito Santo almost killed us. I even pronounced how, you know, I learned how to pronounce his name in the Spanish way. Nuno Espirito Santo. <laughs> they were marvelous. They were absolutely Marvelous. I love them. I just love their football. Leeds this season, Marcelo Bielsa, you ask Manchester City, they will tell you. They are no joke. You know, when you, when, when you look at Leeds play on the page, you can't just believe that they were just promoted from the championship. Oh my! They play that kind of football that tells you we are in the Premier League but we are here to stay. And I, I, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I'm a gunner, but they play more interesting, uh, you know, they have played a more interesting game in the opening half, in, in, in the opening four games than Arsenal. They entertain. They are football. You know, it is, they are this kind of very fast football. I still remember when they were playing Manchester City and City had one option was to keep on surviving, surviving, surviving. I don't know if they could, if they played a team like Manchester United right now. Uh, I think that would be awesome. But don't worry, United fans. Um, you have a, a lot of time to heal. But, you know, Leeds Wolves, I don't think Wolves are going to win away from home. Away to Leeds, they won't win this game. Leeds, can they beat Wolves? Two one, my is my prediction. Two one. So guys, ten games, match the five. I'll come back with what should I call it? The best eleven. I don't think I can watch all games. I don't, I don't think I should come with the best eleven. But I'll come with the review, the Premier League match the five review. Make sure you tune in. I love you so much. <laughs>